So we have this folder structure that that groups the um, the reference data objects on the UI. So let's navigate to a set. Um, if I um, go to the set properties, there's a list of owners. So each of these sets is associated with certain ownership groups, which can be seen if I navigate to, to, to the set properties like I just did. Um, so if I click on manage owners, there's a list of these owners like CRM, enterprise, and MDM. So any user that belongs to one of these groups would have access permissions to this particular set. So let's create um, support user. I'm just going to populate the defaults, give it a random password, and then create it. <clears throat> All right. So that's that's easy, right? Then we go to manage groups and we create a group. So this is the ownership group for this user. So let's say um, support group, right? So next, we want to tell um, RDM application that this group that we just created, the, su the support group, can be used by the users of RDM. So, and I, as I mentioned earlier, group store properties act as a local registry to figure out which was groups are specific to RDM. So now, for doing that, I'll be uh, I'll, I'll need to modify group store properties, and that will also show the general pattern that you know you have to use if you are modifying any of the property files. For that, I'm going to log into my server that is running the RDM application. So most of the property files are, actually all of them, as far as the RDM application is concerned, are located in the um, in the client here, uh, REST API var um, classes. Right. So so this is the all, all the all the configurations that we have in the application. So what we want to do is now we want to modify groups or properties. Um, to specify the group that we just created. Um, most of these property files are read-only, so we may need to um, change the permissions uh, before we can modify it. So I'm just going to sudo um, groups properties, just make it uh, writable and, and basically. And now I'm going to go in and um, um, modify it. So open groups of properties. Uh, so this file follows a key value semantics where key is, so if you see it's MDM is called MDM. So the key is the application specific group name, example, um, uh, what we would see on the UI or what would be used to persist objects. So, so, so the key is the application specific name. And the value is the original VOS group name that's uh, that's that's persisted in in the VOS uh, registry. So this sort of flexibility is um, nice to have because sometimes we need different group rep representations across application and authentication logic. Uh, in this case, though, we have a very simple name, which is um, uh, um, yeah, it's a support group, right? So we are going to just specify an identity mapping for this. For this group, okay. So we have modified the groups of properties. We have specified the group that we just created. First one was um, user roles or properties. So that's here. But uh, so so this file basically contains. Um, mappings from the roles to the functions that the role can perform. So for example, it says administrator can only have access to the managed systems and the types. Approver, on the other hand, has approval privileges, so he can access the main objects that we have. So he cannot access the sets and the mappings, which actually comprise the first class entities in RDM. Um, and, and if it was a super user, it, he basically has access to all of these roles, so he can basically do everything. Um, so if if we were to add a new role, which is a step that we skipped, then we would actually need to come back to this file and we would need to add that role and, and define what functions is that role going to affect. 
So that's about Yugoro's uh, properties. Um, and the other file is uh, ACL properties. ACL stands for Access Control. So uh, there's a lot of text used in here, but let's look at something simple. Um, let's scroll up. Okay, so so let's look at this. This is simple enough. Um, so for a folder, this is this is a policy for the uh, for the folders, right? So for a folder, what this policy says is that. Uh, uh, is that a data steward can create, update, or delete irrespective of the state that the folder is in. So that's the kind of semantics that is encoded in this file, right? So, irrespective, so star is basically uh, is, is any state. So, in, in, you know, for any state, you can perform create, update, or delete yeah, as long as you're the admin or if you're the steward or, or and actually any of those other roles. And then for specific permissions, you have the, you can you, you can fine tune fine tune it and and say that what actions you can perform depending on what entity you are accessing, what state that entity is in, and, and what action you are performing. So um, this file can be used by a customer to modify the permissions uh, model as per their use case. So there's a chance that they may modify something um, and then um, and then use it. And there's also a chance that they may be they may have out of the box configuration and, and something may not be working as per what they're expecting, but it may be simply a matter of modifying uh, the, the state action semantics in this file and, and, and recycling was. And then um, that that might be the issue that they're having. Right. So so I'm logging in using the user that I just created. Um, and if you remember, this this user was uh, only an approver, so that was his role. So it wouldn't, it shouldn't have access to all the uh, all the different tabs that were showing up on the on the UI for the super user. Okay, so so a couple of different observations. So first of all, you can see the role is approver. That's because we we, we assigned that role to this user. It only has access to the mappings and the sets. It doesn't have access to the ad administration tab because it is not an ad administrator, right? And if I now go ahead and create a folder and go to manage owners, it has the support group is what we assign this user to, so that shows up automatically. And all these other groups show up as, as, as something we can add because they are all part of the RDM application, but the, but the user isn't part of them. So so by default, they don't show up here. So right, and then if I go ahead and create this folder, um, let's say folder one, then only the users who are part of the support group um, will be able to uh, you know sort of modify this or, or move this around. 